Good morning, everybody. 6.44 a.m. September 12th, 2017. Here are our new satellite images. Uh, last night, I was actually waiting to see if some of this data would come in because I really wanted to see if Jose was going to make this loop shift, and it looks like it's going to, uh, at least according to this chart and a few others I have pulled up. Now, if you guys remember, Jose was expected to kind of sit along... Uh, under the path of Irma and then kinda here's our first kinda like get crushed in the ocean if that <clears throat> makes sense to anyone it uh, has to do with all the pressures the, the Bermuda Atlantic pressure and there was a big front coming off the east coast of the US that was supposed to have Jose come up this way sit in this area right here and then it was basically gonna get crushed and collapse on itself that's why this model showed nothing past Wednesday um, I have shown this model before but I want to show you how this has changed now because of Irma, guys. Irma is, like we've been saying, is directly related to Jose still being <clears throat> a hurricane as of right now. A Category 1 hurricane, to, uh, just to get the stats out there. Right now, Jose is 75 mile per hour winds, Category 1, 987 barometric pressure. So, that means that it has gotten weaker. They did expect this change to a Category 1 um, I also believe that it would go to Category 1, but now is when we need to really watch closely, uh, especially over this weekend. Um, I know that's a far away is away. Uh, after five days, it's really hard to predict where these things are going to go. I go by data going on around these storms. I don't just uh, pick an idea out of my head and say it's going to hit here. I look at what's going on and I try to see um, how those shifts and those pressures are changing. And again, guys, that's why I have you on the jet stream a lot. And we're going to look at that again today because there's been changes and you can actually see how Jose has this potential to survive and then affect the East Coast. And like I said, guys, the second Irma hit land and all the major severe stuff was over, they were going to switch attention right to Jose. They've replaced their entire side graphic bar with all Jose information. I know it's the only other hurricane going on, so I don't. They, of course, they're going to do that. But I'm just saying, it's just the mentality, guys. They're just, you know, they're lining them up, <clears throat> and they just want to, you know, they're they're all about ratings too. You know how it goes with uh, TV. But anyway, back to the info here. So 5 a.m. Sunday. This is actually an older model now, so I have another one I'll show you. And then it went to this one a little bit more of a deeper angle coming down into the warm water and that's what we were waiting for we knew that it was going to do this loop and that's what it's in the process of doing now so it already made its northern approach and it headed west and now it's actually it's heading east technically but it's about to make that southern dip again and it didn't get crushed by the pressure and I want to show you this chart uh, to show you where that was supposed to happen you can kind of see it here if you watch Jose, it actually gets a little bigger. The severe area in the middle gets bigger. See that? And then there's a line of pressure here that I'm going to show you in another chart. This was supposed to aid in crushing it actually when it was down in this area. It was supposed to be a flatter uh, pressure wall, but what happened is Irma had shot in up through Florida and basically cut a path inside this front. And now there's two parts to it. You can kind of see it wrapping down this way, if you can see my mouse here. It's kind of wrapping down rather than being uh, more flat, like across this way. Irma cut right through it here, causing two pieces. So now there's this, which is more dipping down, as I described in the update uh, text post I made last night on my last video. Uh, Jose is here, and then this is starting to bow around Jose, forcing it this way, forcing it back to the east. This was supposed to be a wall that would crush Jose down in this area. But like I said, Irma came up, cut a path through it, and now we have this deep uh, bubble-like thing that's actually going to go to the back of Jose and be part of the reason why it's pushed back up to the east. It's going to go west naturally, but that's also because of Irma. Now if you check this out, uh, this map here shows that flattening a little bit I want to show you. It's right up here. See how it flattens out right here? That was supposed to be this front coming down in one solid piece and crushing this, not allowing it anywhere to go. And basically it would collapse on itself, but then watch what Irma does here, guys. Irma comes up through Florida, and then watch how it like, cuts a path right here. Boom. And it swings this area out, and it allows Jose a path. It's almost like a channel, if you want to call it that. 
So this just goes to current time. So right now, after in this area, it's projected to hook down this way. And now we need to see how far south Jose goes. The further south it goes, the more warm water it's going to be in and the longer time it has to get strong. And that's why they're watching this storm. If you notice a couple days ago when all the attention was on Irma, they were barely mentioning Jose, even though you could almost see it in every satellite image we were looking at with Irma. So it's like it was like that elephant in the room they didn't dare talk about. They would touch on it here and there because that's, you know, those obligations they have as a weather channel. But they were almost avoiding it. And now that it's making this loop and it's survived this northern approach into cool water and also this hit with a, a cold front here, guys. This is blue. This is colder air, colder water. And it survived. So now it's making its southern loop. It's going to start coming down this way. And then once it gets down here, uh, back towards the Leeward Islands, the north side of them, that's when we're going to have to watch closely because that's when hurricanes take their path. They start heading west, and then they choose. They go up the east coast, or they go into the gulf. So as of right now, guys, I know there a lot of the models are showing up the east coast, and that's what I said originally. There's just as much chance of this thing going into the gulf, and there's reasons for this. And I'm going to show you once again with the jet stream because that is what is controlling these storms and that's also what is pulling these different fronts like Irma. Irma has become its own system. Um, it's a post-tropical cyclone as of right now so the hurricane center isn't even following Irma anymore they're basically just keeping people updated with the severe weather that passed through Atlanta. Uh, they basically had a cold nor'easter. It was a half nor'easter, half tropical storm. It was very very weird tropical storm was down in south uh, east Georgia in top area of Florida and then there was a nor'easter in areas like Atlanta so it was mixing with the cold air so um, as far as speeds and stuff like that for Jose right now right now it's at 75 mile per hour we got 90 mile an hour gusts recorded it's 987 on the barometric pressure which has risen which means the storm got weaker went to category one but now is when we need to really watch and I'm going to show you why. And it's on this jet stream model. Here we go. Here is the zero hour. So this is current. If you can see, yesterday, they didn't even have Jose registered here. So it wasn't even registered on this map. This map shows you very dense areas. Um, our gray map that we use of the jet stream shows even more dense areas. So you barely see Jose here as a category two or one storm. It's not until it turns back into a three that you get to see it. And this map projects that that's what happens. I'm not saying that's what's definitely going to happen, but guys, we need to think about this because the same thing happened with Irma. All right, let's move forward with this. And I want to show you how these fronts are changing and why Jose is projected to go up into this area. Some of the models are showing it staying out to the east in the ocean, which would be a good thing. It would miss the east coast completely. But that's why in the thumbnail I write, how low will Jose go? The lower Jose goes after this loop it makes, the more chance it has to hit areas like Florida, Georgia, South Carolina. Believe it or not, guys, this is what the data is showing. This is not me making this up. So I'm going to show you. Here we go. If I can get this thing to work. This map always freezes up on me. I don't know why. Okay, so here we go. We're at zero hours. Every click is a plus six hours, just so you guys know. I never said that in the past, but here's the hour thing up here that you can follow. So it's a projection map, 100%, but this is what they project as far as the pressures. Now, remember what I told you. The jet stream reformed itself after breaking. Um, it broke, and a wall was created here, and that's what kept Irma staying west to the west side of Florida. Had it passed sooner, it would have gone up the east coast. So a lot of factors played into this storm being weaker before it hit Florida. Cuba is the reason that uh, places like Naples and the west coast of Florida isn't totally destroyed right now. They lucked out. You know, if you want to call it lucked out, a lot of people are still flooded. Their property's damaged and stuff. But guys, it could have been so much worse. So much worse, Irma, could have been had this front been in the way a little less longer. And again, we need to look at that same exact data for Jose because that is what's happening. And not only is it the jet stream um, actually moving quicker than expected that is allowing Jose to survive, a big part of it is Irma and this front because I want you to watch this. It actually surrounds Jose. Again, here is the jet stream, the deep U we see. A lot of the times it's very... Uh, it's a very good U-shape right here, and then as it gets towards the water, it makes contact. It'll either shoot out far to the east, or it'll dip down inside. It dipped down inside for Irma, and that's what created that diagonal wall right here. You can almost see a version of it like this. This is what it looked like 
uh, right before Irma had made contact with Florida. <clears throat> so now we have a U shifted to the east. This is over water, but what this U is doing, this jet stream, is it's pulling the remainder of Irma with it, and it's turning this arc counter uh, clockwise around Jose. And you'll see this bottom part actually starts to wrap under Jose, and that's what pushes Jose down farther than we thought, and then hooks it back to the west, and then eventually it's also the reason why Jose goes up the east coast, and we're going to look at that right now. So move forward, we're at plus 30 hours now into the future, and here's 36 hours, so on and so on. And you see how the jet stream separates again from the Irma system, but it's still dragging it, so it's pulling it, and then eventually it starts wrapping around like this, and by this time, look at Jose. Jose's already finished its loop, and it's already heading up north uh, basically parallel with the Bahamas. So according to this chart, we'll see how close it gets now. There we go. So this chart is expecting it to, uh, the the southern dip to be shallow enough to where it won't hit the Bahamas or doesn't look like Florida. Things may change, guys. That's why I'm stressing how, how far south it goes. The further south Jose goes after it makes its loop, the more, sh the the steeper the angle it's going to be, and the bigger chance of it hitting Florida, or following a similar path, a uh, similar path to Irma, guys. There's still a chance that might happen. So here we go forward. See how this is looping around, and then you're going to see something interesting here. These are like straight up steering winds that are uh, putting these models, you know, keeping Jose on the upper East Coast, and this is why. Look at this. Look at these winds. The arrows are pointing this way. This is wind going this way. This is the arc of Irma still in the Atlantic, just still sitting here. It's almost, it's turning into a steering wheel for Jose. Had Irma not existed, this wouldn't be here. Jose would be gone. We wouldn't even have a Jose. But Irma is playing a huge part, like we said. And then part of the jet stream is dragging down a new front, which is pushing across Florida. This is 162 hours into the future, so it may change, guys. you got to remember that. But this is what they have now. And now we have an under steering wind. We have an over steering wind that won't let Jose go out to the ocean. It won't let it go down, which hurricanes rarely do anyway. And that's why they're expecting Jose to be in this area and possibly get pushed into the upper northeast. Now again, if it goes south, very low, it could also affect Florida, South or Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, even Virginia, guys. But if it's above if it stays above this front that's coming underneath Florida right here, we're going to get more data even later on in the day. We should have another frame of this. This is really important because this is what's steering Jose, and this is why it's a threat to the Northeast. <clears throat> so what we need to do is we need to watch uh, through the weekend. The weekend is very important for this. Um, I don't see a lot changing. Uh, Jose might get stronger in the next day or two if it does. Um, guys, the weather channel and stuff, they're going to be all over this. If this thing raises, again, like I said, it dropped to a Category 1, 75 mile per hour winds. If we see a Cat 2, they're going to jump on this thing as if it was Irma once again. So expect to see that. You're going to see the drama all over the internet. You're going to see all this stuff, guys. So just what you need to do is not so much look at where uh, these charts show Jose ending up. You need to look at what's going on around it and the changes. And that's why, again, I stress the jet stream. The jet stream is always changing. It's never consistent. You can get a five to six day prediction or an idea. And for the most part, you know, they are right. I guess 10 days, nine, eight days into the future is a little pushing it. But you gotta understand, we have this constant stream going across the US from the east or from the west to the east, passing into the Atlantic and it's a force. It pulls things with it and it's pulling the remnants of Irma with it. And that is what ends up hooking underneath Jose and allowing it to the East Coast. So once again, like this is why I was saying in the past videos that Irma would play that significant role. We'll check this one out real quick. And you see this is Irma. This is the front of Irma and it's very dense parts just in this chart though. So this is going to wrap around Jose. Here's Jose there. <clears throat> you see it wrap uh, clockwise around and it's going to be that under pressure and then a pressure is going to form here, not allowing it to go this way. And that's why we have the East Coast as a risk for the next 10 days. See uh, Jose here. Sorry, I keep mixing the names up. I'm sure you guys know what I mean, though. Okay, and then we have our pressure charts. This is uh, part of the jet stream that we were talking about. Here is Irma. Irma is going to wrap out this way. 
as Jose makes its low dip, and then eventually it's going to be like that sport where you have that uh, that curved handle and you whip the ball out of it. Think about that. That's kind of a similar idea here. So this is going to come down, it's going to whip around, and then Jose is going to ride right up the east coast. And again, that's why I'm stressing the angle. It's all about how far south Jose comes to where it's going to, what part of the east coast it's going to threaten. All right, guys, so that is the latest data for Jose. Now, I will have an update later on today, but this is what we're dealing with, so we really need to keep an eye on this storm. I mean, it looks like it's blowing up right there. So <clears throat> once we get this dip south, that's when it's time to really focus on this because it's going to start heading west again, and it depends on how big it gets, and then we need to see the angle. It's all about this southern angle that's going to affect the east coast. All right, guys, that's it for today, at least for now. I'll talk to you guys later on in the afternoon. Thanks a lot.